It's not a criminal offence for your guys to, to not display their badge, is well, it? I, I said it is under Section 9. Oh, a criminal offence? Well, so they, they have to abide by the licence conditions. One of those licensing conditions is that they must display their licence. Yeah. So it is an offence under the Private Security Industry Act. We're YouTubers, right? And that's, that's, that's the YouTube channel. Okay. And what we do, we go around secure places where you, your guys, your SIA registered staff right. are trying to secure. Okay. And we stay on the public area, but we just test people's professionalism. Right. And we highlight security weaknesses that they have. Um, most of the time, the SIA registered and trained staff, okay. they, they number one, they don't have their SIA badge on display. Right. Uh, so we, we make this an entertaining part of the video to say, who are you? I'm the security guard. Are you SIA trained or registered? Is it trained or registered or both? Licensed. Licensed. Okay, so are you SIA licensed? Uh, yes, because, well, how do I know? Where's your badge? Oh, it's in my pocket or in, in, the, in the gatehouse. Well, you're not supposed to have it on display? No, no, we're not supposed to. So in, it, already it sort of adds a bit of uh, entertainment for the viewer. Right? So what's the penalty if they don't have it on display? Or is it just a slap on the wrist, a warning? So it is an offence not to display it under right. Section 9. Of the PSIA, the license conditions need to be complied with. The, I mean, the, how we would dispose of that is probably with a warning. Yeah. yeah. There are certain um, activities, such as covert activities, yeah. um, where they don't need to be displayed, such as if you're in a shop and you're an undercover uh, th uh, theft yeah. person yeah. Trying, to, trying to prevent a uh, theft prevention officer. Like a loss prevention, yeah. yeah. yeah then it, it would be a bit silly to have it displayed because everyone would know that you're not yeah. a member of the public. So yeah. it is an offence under Section 9. Right. Know, the okay. So, for example then, if they learn from it and they say, oh, actually, you're right, sorry, I forgot today, and they pop it in, no problem. But if they clearly defend themselves, say, no, I'm not supposed to uh, wear it, and they, they start saying, anyway, bugger off, or, or they swear, or they start showing really unprofessional behaviour. Yeah. Are you encouraging people to tell you about it? Yeah, yeah, you can report that through our website. It's also a code of conduct for license holders that we recently published a couple of years ago. But you can report any illegal activity or any concerns that you have through our website. Oh, can you now? Right. So even the viewers then that are watching, if they feel like that that person should be more professional, they could submit a report. Yeah. And yeah. obviously, if you get multiple reports about the same video, for example, yeah. that we publish, yeah, yeah, then yeah. you'll just collate them together. You won't start saying, right, you've had four, four reports, yeah. four warnings. So, so, I mean, as a regulator, we, we get a number of reports about a number of things, whether that's public safety concerns, whether that's non-compliance. We have to invest our resources yeah. wisely to do it. Prioritise it, yeah. When, when it comes to dealing with that type of activity, we do have teams, we have desk-based desk yeah. teams who can review footage, review any information that's submitted, submitted whether that's pictures. Um, one of the, I mean, one of the key points that we would say to license holders is members of the public need to know that you're a member of the security team, because if something happens, they need to know who to go to to report it when they're on site. Take this for instance, if, if someone was walking around you, and they didn't have a badge, you would have known because yeah. everyone's wearing badges, but yeah. the, the license is very distinctive. So yeah. wearing your badge is very important so that members of the public yeah. can see that you are there as a physical presence yeah. uh, to either deter something or if something does happen to intervene. So if somebody spotted a, a potential threat, the fact that you can be identified as quick as possible yeah. is benefit to everyone yeah. involved. Exactly. So, and, and what our argument is, when they come and approach us on the public footpath, mm. are they just... Um, member of staff are they a contractor you know what sort of authority do they have and when it's somebody with a badge we're sort of like right okay you are the correct person that we that could yeah. be telling us please leave you know yeah, yeah. so if we're on their land once they ask you to leave you leave else it then becomes trespass yeah. um and if you don't leave aggravated trespass yeah. which no what nobody wants but it's nice to know that it's actually an sia trained licensed person yeah. who's got all the knowledge that they should know yeah. and not just some some random bloke from yeah who's only started the company two days yeah. ago. I mean, you, you know, they're, they're there to do a job and their employers should be offering them site-specific training. Yeah, yeah. Trespass is a really common one for security guards to have to deal with. Is someone authorised to access the site? If not, then let's try and get them, remove them. Yeah. Typically, we, you know, security guards and door supervisors, we wouldn't suggest that they intervene in this absolutely necessary. But yeah. They should have the right controls in place, the right... Um, contacts to be able to alert the authorities who can then come in and deal with a trespasser if they're unable to yeah. remove them from the site through negotiation. 
one of the most common instances that I come across is I'm just going round into the publicly accessible areas. Now that's a key word, publicly accessible. So if yeah. the gate's open, the site's open, we wander around and we never enter the restricted areas. Yeah. So when your SIA licensed guys come and approach us and they interact with us, yeah. most of the time they say, could you stop filming? Yeah. So that's the first question. And of course, we don't want to stop filming because if they then start to misbehave, we yeah. want to capture that. So we say, we can't stop filming and then we expect them then to say, right, could you please leave? Yeah. Right. Sometimes they say, could you leave first? But most of the time they, say, they focus on the filming part. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, now I've seen I've seen a load of videos, you know, yeah. auditors. Would you agree? The police and, and everyone. Would you um, agree that the camera should remain rolling, but they should be focusing on actually asking you to leave? Listen, everyone's got the right. I mean, you know, you'll see a lot of security guards nowadays with body worn cameras to capture how they're operating and, and who's approaching them. Yeah. And, and you know, everyone's got the right to film in public spaces. If yeah. You, I mean, I assume you've got approval to film yeah. today. So, yeah. 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 You know, it, I mean, it's a bit <laughs> intrusive. I, when you came up with the camera, I was yeah. like, I'm a bit camera shy. Obviously. So yeah. But listen, we're having a conversation now. It's really good to really meet you. Points. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Um, you know, look at our website, all of the information that you need to know and all of the information that members of the public need to know about licensing, about the code of conduct for, for individual license holders, about employers and their responsibilities, that can all be found on our website. Yeah, it's really good. The only thing that I just wanted to clarify, right, when, let's call it an intruder, yeah. is on private property, which your guys are protecting, the focus, once the, the subject has refused to turn the camera off, mm. so we're at a point now where, the, I'm sorry, I can't turn the camera off, yeah. Should they persistently try and get the camera to be turned off when the member of the public has said, sorry, I want to keep this rolling for yeah. evidential purposes, yeah. just like you're entitled to keep yours rolling, but they should then focus on, please leave, yeah, and, I mean, and use reasonable force yeah. if required, yeah. but obviously as a last resort, obviously uh, uh, try and persuade the intruder to leave yeah. verbally, and then if that's not working, then use reasonable force. Would you agree? Or should, should focus <laughs> be put on the filming? No, well, Listen, they're there to do a job, and whether that's to protect the assets of the premises, whether it's to protect property, um, and even to protect sensitive information as an asset of the of the of the site. Yeah, if that's some intellectual the, property yeah, inside, yeah, yeah. Um, we would always, and the training would always lean towards negotiation, mediation, and, and working through a, a situation before intervention. Right. Um, we're probably not the right people to be asking about filming and things like that. It's probably the ICO or, or someone like, yeah. you know, a, a regulator of... Yeah, of it, it does seem sometimes there's too much um, backwards and forwards on the same subject of the camera. Yeah. And I think they should just move straight on to, you, you've got well within your rights yeah. to ask us to leave. And then if we don't leave, use reasonable force to make us leave, you know, yeah. s s slowly push us out, out the premises. Yeah. But very few people tend to go down that avenue, but they stick on the filming. Don't film, don't film. Well, I, know, I suppose I go back to the point, it, it's a little bit intrusive, it's not illegal, yeah. it's a little bit, you know, if, if, you, if I was sat at my desk and someone came up to me and just put a camera in my face, yeah. I'd be like, you know, yeah, what's, yeah, yeah. what's going on here? I've, I've seen the videos online, I think all the team um, and having those YouTube channels... Do you like watching it? I can uh, tell you're smiling, <laughs> you're smiling, aren't you? I, mean, I, I see some of that. I've never really seen a... I've seen a more so to do with the police and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen um, that channel? Uh, I'll, I'll check it out. Yeah. So well, you'll be on it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I'm really glad that I've met met the, somebody from the SIA licensing. Yeah. It's really nice to hear that that you have got some sort of portal online where we can report yeah. uh, infringements. Would you call it infringements? Uh, well, I mean, we, we Misconduct? Concerns? Or concerns? Or criminality. Criminality? <laughs> really? It's not a criminal well, offence for your guys to, to not display their badge, is well, it? I, I said it is under Section 9. Oh, a criminal offence? Well, so they, they have to abide by the license conditions. One of those licensing conditions is that they must display their license. Yeah. So it is an offence under the Private Security Industry Act. That's just, that's just breaking your policy rules, though, isn't it? That's not a criminal uh, offence, is it? Well, oh, an act. Yeah, so it's, it's under the Private Security Industry Act. Which, oh, is it? Legislation? Which yeah, which we are. Ooh, so, right, OK. So if I look on legislation.gov for... Yeah, for Private Security Industry Act 2001, Section 9, says it explains the license conditions right and then you can get the license conditions from our website so i'm going to pop up on screen now for the viewers on that legislation.gov section 9 of the 
Private Security Industry Act 2001. On legislation.gov.uk, there is the Private Security Industry Act 2001. Section 9, and when we go down to subsection C, there are conditions imposing obligations that they have to do as to the production, so produce your license, and displaying of the license. So the conditions that the SIA give, the SIA license conditions you must follow. And the conditions are, you must wear your license where it can be seen at all times when engaging in designated licensable activity, unless you've reported it lost or stolen. So they're not displaying it. Have you reported it lost and stolen then? No. It's in our possession. Oh, have the SIA got it in their possession? That's why you're not displaying it. No. Oh, well, you must be working covertly then, undercover. No. Therefore, they must have it on display. And if they don't, the portal that the SIA now provide, it becomes a crime. So you have to fill out all these fields and the SIA will then put it on the list to be investigated. And once you do get a license, um, SIA license showed to you, then you can't see no personal details on there. All you can see is a license number and they do have a register of license holders. So you can enter the 16 digit number in here and it will bring up some details, some further details about the SIA card holder. Yep, so you can all see. And now we know that if they do refuse to display their, their badge, then they are actually breaking the law, which is absolutely bizarre to me because so many times they refuse to even display it. But would you agree that no personal details could be actually obtained by me seeing it it's only a number yeah, my, my personal details are now going to be i'm like, going to blow your anything personal we can't use oh. and i've not said your full name anyway um but when when they're displaying it they're, they're a bit um cautious that yeah. personal details are going to be put online right yeah. but it's only it doesn't say their full name does it it gives a license number um, full and, name and they're written they're all so that no it doesn't give a full name perfect but they have to be registered. So one of one of our statutory functions is to administer a register of license holders. And where there have been um, instances in the past where certain types of cer certain security guards doing certain roles have been targeted by activists and campaigners, there is a legitimate risk there to, to their safety. Um, that said, there is a register of license holders. So. You yeah, know, and I, I won't go. I won't go into detail for yeah. your no. reviews, but you know there is a public register. So obviously, this public register that anybody can access, it's only going to give. Is it give their first and surname? Uh, I, don't I don't know. And it wouldn't. It wouldn't give their address or anything like that, surely. We, we work in business standards, so we're not as familiar right. with the register and all of the mechanisms. Okay. That sit for, for my viewers, I'm just going to pop an example of the register up on screen right now. We can then see what, what information is publicly available. But there's no way from seeing the person on the video, oh, you could possibly enter their badge number into the public register, could you? And then pop up their details. Ah, so it, there is their concern about being identified when they're published online is a valid concern. But you guys are not taking that into account because you're saying you must display it. And by displaying it means anybody's eyes and a camera can see it. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. So, but so, when they signed up to that job, yeah. they've accepted that they they've may be the put on the public yeah. register. Okay. Okay. If if they, I mean, it's a really tricky one. We've 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 had a number of instances, and one of um, there's been a number of instances over the years where security guards themselves and their employees have come to us and said, "Look, we need to try and protect." Yeah, our, I can see. Our, our staff and yeah. protect those who work. We've always taken quite a hard line that the license needs to be displayed for them to do uh, a job and that's yeah. to protect assets and, and protect property and premises and most importantly people. Um, and, and if their license isn't displayed, they're not immediately identifiable. And actually by displaying the license, one of if you read through our act quite thoroughly, it will talk about um, deterring something from happening. Yeah. So a licenseable activity isn't just about 
intervening. It's about providing a physical presence to deter something. Yeah. And quite often you'll find that having uh, man guards on the doors, um, having them in high vis with a license display, is far more persuasive to yeah. someone from trying to get in yeah. than if you've got someone who's there in a suit in a convention full of suits. Yeah. Uh, and, door without a license. and I agree with what you've just said and also in reverse the fact that they can be accountable because their identity could be found out mm. I must behave I must be professional because if not they've got my ID they can go on the public register and report me yeah. so yeah if anything it forces them to be professional yeah and they should be professional yeah this is a professional industry um, so they've got nothing to be worried about then because they, they should not be getting I suppose if somebody does something wrong and then takes um, sort of revenge for no reason, unreasonable behaviour from the, the customer's side. Yeah. And of course, listen, license holders are, are well within their right to report any concerns that they have yeah. about targeted yeah. Yeah. abuse, malicious activity to the police. They'll use the law in their favour, yeah. That's a yeah. To the police, yeah. So, yeah. I can see it. So I fully understood now, right? I've learned quite a lot. And I'll now refer to it as the SIA license holder. Fa this. Thank you so much. There's a, lot, there's a lot of QR codes on the first page. This one's all about um, working together with uh, partners um, and everything like that. So yeah. I'll through there. And I did just flick through um, to page nine, and section nine is contravention of the license and conditions. Right. Uh, so it is an offence. Thank you so much. I will be popping that up on the screen. Viewers will learn. I've learned. And I do thank you for your time. I won't say your surname, but Lawrence, it's been a pleasure to meet you today. Thank you so much. Are, are you based somewhere a static in the Midland, uh, in the UK? Uh, I'm, I'm based uh, in the north. In the north of the UK. Uh, uh, the SIA um, has a national national responsibility across the whole of the UK. Yeah. But our head office is in, in London. So head office in London, but you have got offices elsewhere and you're in the north one. We, we have... Um, working from home arrangements. Oh, do you? Yeah. It's on the national teams. Right, okay, okay. Thank it's you, Lawrence. Still 70 of us yeah. that, so. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, DJ Audits. DJ <laughs> What's your real name? I stay behind the camera. <laughs> my, my, um, my colleague, PJ Audits, I don't know if you've noticed him, he's got long dreadlocks. Oh, I've seen him, I've seen him walking Yeah, yeah. We, we arrive. He's identifiable. Yeah, yeah. Um, nobody knows what I look like. So, <laughs> and here's me filming everyone else. Let me, let me take a quick picture. No, I'm going. Bye, Lawrence. I'm covering my face as I walk away from Lawrence.